Good morning, Mahbuba. Here's your coffee machine, the Breville Breezy Express BES870. As you saw in the photos, it's in pretty good condition. Um, I just finished refurbishing this machine yesterday, and it is, you know, working like new, no problems at all. Um, and I've also given it a full cleaning cycle, a descale mode, and um, a wipe on the outside, so it's actually pretty good looking now. Obviously, being a used machine, it does have some wear and tear, mainly around the front. Uh, scratches from the cup going in and out from the milk jug um, nothing too crazy actually it's pretty good um, and yeah it's ready to go I am making my morning latte on it this morning my this morning and uh, hopefully we'll get to go through all the features and test everything so you can have the peace of mind of uh, buying a machine that's in full working order and of course I'm gonna be selling it with warranty so you don't have to worry about that um, yeah so I'm not sure if this is your first coffee machine or not, but I'll tell you everything from the beginning. When you turn on the machine, uh, it'll take about a minute to heat up. You see the buttons light up here, that means it's ready to go. You can make the coffee right away, um, but I recommend warming up the machine. So you can warm up the machine in two ways, either by just waiting 10 or 20 minutes, everything will warm up slowly in 20 minutes. So you have the heat from the boiler and it will go through the top lid to the port filter and the group head here. Um, you can even store your cups here on top but i recommend you warm it up uh, actively and that's by running some hot water through the handle uh, i call that a blank shot so i would do a blank shot with every machine i do i'll get my cup i'll put it underneath no coffee in the handle and i'll press the double button that's going to give me uh, about 100 mils of hot water that's going to warm up things pretty quickly and it's, it's also going to clean a bit of the coffee grounds and oil that are stuck up in the group head uh, so it's like two steps in one. Uh, I like to do it for every machine that I use. You can do this once or twice. I'm going to do it once, should be fine. So take out the port filter and make sure you dry it. This is a double basket. Your machine comes with, I think, three, ba four baskets. So it, it comes with all four baskets, which is good. Also comes with a full cleaning kit. So that's um, like the back flush disc and the Allen key and the pin tool. Uh, quite a few things. Just to put it back. And of course the tamper as well. Um, but no milk jug, you'll have to get your own milk jug. Uh, so, the double basket takes 18 grams. This is the single wall double basket. Uh, 18 grams of ground coffee. If um, There's also the single shot uh, basket, and there's a dual wall um, pair of baskets as well. The dual wall baskets are a bit easier to use, so they can use um, coffee that's a bit older or pre-ground coffee if you buy it pre-ground from the shops uh, but if, you grind, if you're grinding fresh beans with your own grinder use this basket it will taste the best and it will give you good crema the other basket the dual wall variety will give you crema as well but it will be fake crema so it will be a bit more bubbly uh, not sure if you like that or not but I think this will give you the, the most authentic crema we'll see you now um, right the one thing that we have to figure out, because I haven't made a coffee on this machine before, um, is figure out the correct ground size. Let's just quickly have a look. So, I'm just going to mess with the settings on the blade here. So, it's at the factory number 6 now. You don't have to mess with this anymore, I think. Um, I will put it at line size number three. Let's try number three. Um, I've got my beans here. Try to use fresh beans or good quality supermarket beans. If you use older beans, what will happen is your coffee will be too runny. You won't get a lot of crema. 
and um, your coffee will be tasting sour if the beans are a bit too old. Uh, here I'm using Aldi beans. They're about within one month of roasting. So uh, let's see. Yeah, about five weeks from roasting, so not too old. If you, if you get beans and you don't store them properly and they're more than a month old, they will start becoming quicker and quicker and you'll start noticing a loss in pressure. Um, I also recommend Aldi beans. Aldi beans are usually pretty fresh. Other brands can be stale and old. So if you try, for example, the Vittoria beans, usually they're a bit too old for my taste and they just, they just run too quickly through the machine. They don't give you a lot of crema. They don't give you a lot of pressure. Um, Um, we'll see what we get. Um, I'm just going to quickly grind and see what, what's the grind size like. Okay, so this is quite fine. Maybe we'll go to grind size number four. We'll try grind size number four. Grind size number five, maybe. Or six. Let's, let's try number six. And that looks alright. We'll make coffee at grind size number six, and if it's too slow, we'll just make another shot. Make sure to always close your bag properly, otherwise it'll lose its freshness. Okay, I'm gonna turn on my scale. So, uh, so I'll measure the input and output. I'll measure the input of the coffee beans um, and the output uh, in terms of the espresso. We are going to keep it on grind size number six. I'm gonna keep this on, on number 12. Uh, you can change it to the double. Um, I like to keep it on single. So when you go to double, it'll grind double the quantity. On single, it'll grind, again, half the quantity, but it's gonna be more uh, consistent, I think, because it, you don't make a mess, you don't lose coffee grounds. Uh, so if you grind the double amount, it, like, it might just fall onto the side because it's like a big heap of coffee. So I'll keep it on single, we'll see. <laughs> my first dose let's see what we get six grams okay we were aiming for nine grams um, I might increase the grind size it's still looking a bit too fine for me let's go to grind size number eight Start over, this is grind size number eight. And a bit more. That's nine grams. Once you get nine grams, lightly press it with the tamper and then press it again. So we'll put it at three o'clock position just to see how much we get. So that gave us eight grams.
Hopefully the four o'clock position should give us about nine grams. Just gonna to top it up. 18 grams exactly, perfect. So once I have 18 grams, this is what it would look like before I press it. Just spread it with your fingers before you press it with a tamper. Get the tamper. Apply even pressure. It might be a bit too fine just looking at it, um, but we'll see. So I know if my coffee is finely ground, too finely ground, uh, if the coffee comes out very slow. So if it comes out very slowly and we have very high pressure, that means um, we we ground it too fine. Uh, and on the other hand, if the coffee comes out very quickly with very low pressure, that means it is very large grind size. It's very coarsely uh, ground. Uh, that means the particles are too big and the water is going through them too quickly. We want it to be in the middle, not too fine, not too coarse. Lock it in the middle. We'll see, let's press the double button. You can also program the buttons, but for the video I'm not going to. Yep, it looks like too fine, so nothing is coming out. Uh, our particles are too finely ground. I will... Pause the coffee. Quickly flush. Okay, I think we got the settings a bit closer now. I've changed the internal setting and I've changed the setting on the side here to number nine. Uh, I will try again. So take out the water filter. Calibrate my scale. And we will put this at number 12 again. The grind size number nine. We'll see how, how much we get. Okay, this is seven grams. It's a bit better. Go to nine. And this is nine grams exactly. So once you have nine grams in the first dose, Press it with the tamper just quickly like this. So this is two o'clock position. We got 17 grams, so just a little bit more. This should give us nine grams, hopefully. This is 18 grams. So before I press it, I am going to spread it with the finger. Get the tamper. Press it nice and firm. Make sure it's even. Make sure there's no gaps. And if you're in a hurry and you don't have a scale, uh, or you can't, you don't have the time to, to measure, uh, just press it down. Look at the depth of the tamper. So this silver part should disappear. The silver part on the tamper should disappear if you have the correct amount of coffee. In this case, it's disappearing, it's flush, and this is exactly 18 grams as we see in my, in my scale. If there's any coffee on here, clean it up. And lock in the handle. You also have a hot water tap, of course, so. Here 
gonna give you clean water right from the boiler. Um, you can use that for long black coffee. You can use it for tea bags. I use it to add a bit of sugar to my coffee and help it dissolve. So we measured the input at 18. We want a, we want we want the output to be double of what we put in. So we put um, we want 36 grams out. Um, that's the normal espresso recipe, two to one ratio. Um, you don't have to follow it exactly. You can be a bit more or, or a bit less. Uh, but most coffees will taste better this way. If your coffee tastes better at longer ratios, for example, three to one or four to one, then I guess do what makes it taste best for you. Uh, but uh, I'm going to follow a 2 to 1 for ease of use um, or for simplicity. So I'm going to aim for, let's say, 40 grams. You don't have to be exact. 40 grams of coffee out. Um, it should take about 25 seconds uh, from the button press. Now, uh, like I said, these buttons are programmable. You can adjust them. And actually, let's, let's do the double button just to show you how it's done. I'm going to adjust the double button to give us 40 grams of coffee with these beans, with these settings. So you need to know that if you change the bean brand, you might get quicker or slower coffee. So you might need to change the grind size. And as a result, you might need to change the buttons. But you don't have to. I guess just receive when you receive the machine as is, try it, see if you're happy with the settings. Um, so to program, you press program. Then you press the button you want to program, which is the double. I'm also going to use my timer. You want the pressure to be in the gray zone. So anyway, from 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock is fine. It's about 12 o'clock pressure. Very good. It's flowing at a good rate. Maybe a bit too quick, but the pressure is good at least. And we're getting a lot of good crema. So we are at 25 seconds now. I think this is a good shot. Uh, like I said, it was a little bit too quick. If we grind a bit finer, it's okay. Uh, but this is grind size nine. Maybe we can try grind size eight. Uh, you can try grind size eight, but I think this is a good shot. I will measure it. And it is 40 grams, so 42. Uh, not too bad. Uh, I think this will taste really good. Um, and I think it's close enough. I'll keep the settings as is and I'll let you try with your own beans when you get home. Um, yeah, you asked about crema. Yeah, this is good crema. Let me show you. Um, this is authentic single wall crema, uh, authentic espresso crema. Um, and the crema will depend not really on the machine. It will depend on the beans and the settings you use. Um, so if you use really fresh beans, like if you buy them fresh from the roaster, you will get good coffee with good crema. Whereas if you buy the cheaper beans at the supermarket, like, I don't want to say cheaper, but some beans are pretty old and not really good. Um, even the expensive ones, like Lavazza sometimes is more expensive than Coles, but it's older. Uh, you figure that out, it's very strange. Um, but yeah, it's, it'll depend mostly on the beans. So if you buy your beans freshly roasted, you have this much, this much crema. Cool. Uh, once you're done with that, take out the porta filter, knock it, give it a flush. So the machine works perfectly. Um, just while cleaning it, I noticed, I think it was this, this button, this the single cup, the single button. Sometimes you need to be pressing it a bit harder. So this one, if I press, if I press the double button, easy, it, it's easy to <laughs> trigger. So and I'm not pressing hard. This one, it depends on where you press. So if you press on the bottom, it's easy. If you press on top, it's easy. But in the middle, you have to press a bit harder. Um, it's not, it's not a huge problem, I think. press on the left it's uh, easy as well in the middle and on the right it's a bit harder um, 
yeah, it's not, not really a big thing. Plus, most people only use this button and this button. And uh, I can't remember the last time I pressed a single button on my machine uh, when I had the Brewster Express. Uh, but yeah, it works fine. Yeah, everything works fine. Um, hot water tap, we tested that. Uh, steamer, let's steam some milk. Turn on the steamer, wait 10 or 15 seconds for the steam to start coming out. I've got my jug here, it's a stainless steel jug, and I filled it this much with milk, cold full cream milk from the fridge, which is better than room temperature milk. Once it reaches full pressure, turn it off, put it at an angle, turn it back on. Keep the milk spinning in the vortex. And keep the, the tip of the, uh, the wand close to the surface for the first 10 seconds. And after that, raise the jug. You don't want to be, the, you, you don't want to keep the tip too close to the surface for too long. Otherwise, what will happen is you, you get a lot of foam. Your, co your coffee will be very thick. It won't be smooth like, like a latte should be. Um, but yeah, you can watch a lot of YouTube videos that will teach you much better than I am. Uh, I'm not a barista myself, so I don't usually do latte art, but we will try certainly. Once it's too hot to the touch, turn it off. And before you let it cool down, give it a purge. This is very important. A lot of the machines don't uh, get a lot of problems for this reason. You have to purge it, and then turn it off. This purging will clean the insides from any milk. If the milk stays on the inside of the hole, it will block it next morning. So you'll come make a coffee in the, in the next, on the next day, and the machine gives you no steam, and that's the reason. Uh, you also have a thick layer of milk, you want to wipe that off. Grab a sponge or a wet towel and wipe it. And easy as that. That's the machine nice and clean. Um, let's put everything back together. Don't let the coffee or the milk sit for too long, so try to not waste too much time. Here's my milk. I'm gonna knock the jug on the counter to break any big air bubbles. And then swirl it around to mix it up. All done. Let me show you the final result. That's my latte. Not really, it's not really art, but <laughs> uh, it's got a lot of foam from the milk. Uh, Looks good. I'm sure you can do better coffee with some practice. Um, this is your Bruce Express. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later today. Cheers.